Local support for News 6 has been provided by the Northwest Ohio Educational Technology Foundation, Bowling Green State University, and the members of WBGU-TV. Michelle Luthman from St. Louis School. Welcome to News 6. With today's first story, here's Nathan Schwab. Today's show will be taking a look at three types of collections. Ryan Wagner takes News 6 out on the ice for the first story. <laughs> Diana Ball turns a sport into a collection. What first got you interested in ice skating? When I was a little girl, Bowling Green State University built a brand new ice arena, and on a Sunday afternoon, they had a public skating session. I went skating and loved it. I joined the skating club and started skating seriously. From there, collecting skating memorabilia just came natural. Could you tell us the sort of things in your collection? Well, over the years, I've collected many, many items. I have jigsaw puzzles, greeting cards, kitchen towels, pot holders, uh, candy tins, even pictures and paintings that have skaters on them. I collect almost anything as long as it has an ice skater on it. What are some of your favorite items? I like pieces that are very different from each other. I have a porcelain doll that's named Grace and she was all handmade. Her clothes were hand sewed by hand and her face was painted and she has skates on. I also have a Christmas stocking that's made like a Victorian skate that's pretty interesting. I also have a wooden piece that's like Big Bird and you can pull the string at the bottom of him and make him move. I also like all the music boxes that I have and they of course all play the skater's waltz. Did you participate in any ice skating competitions? Yes, I did. I also skated in some ice shows and played everything from a hula girl to the Wicked Witch of the West in The Wizard of Oz. But in the skating competitions, Bowling Green sponsored a competition every year that was called the Tri-State Competition. And I competed there and I also competed in Lansing, Michigan. It was a lot of work and very nerve-wracking, but it was always a great way to get your picture in the paper. <laughs> Today's News 6 is produced by the 6th grade class of St. Louis School. St. Louis School is located in Custer, about 17 miles southwest of Bowling Green. It was founded in 1881 and has a population of about 200. Our next story takes Candy Clink out to the field for a look into tractor collecting. Paul Hoyle may be plowing his way into the largest tractor collection. What time frame does your collection cover? My toy collection covers the mechanization of agriculture starting from 1900 to 1920 with the steam engines and the early self-propelled tractors into many developments made in the 1940s and 1950s into the super super machines we have of today. Which are your oldest tractors? I have a couple miniature tractors that are approximately 20 years old. Um, an International 1066 and uh, Case 2870. These tractors were made in the mid 70s which by today's standards they are considered older. What is your most valuable tractor? My most valuable tractor is the John Deere 7520. It was made in the early 70s, and today it has a value 
of about $250 to $300. I also have an Oliver 1655, which it, it's custom made, handmade, and it has a value of about $150. Why do you collect tractors? I was born and raised in an agricultural community, and although I'm not directly related to farming myself, the toy tractor collection keeps me in close ties with the agricultural industry and what is happening with the, the new machines of today and what farming was like in the past with the older machines. This week's Kids View question asks St. Louis sixth graders to become inventors for a day. Here's what they would make. Hi, my name's David Hoyle, reporting for News 6. Today's Kids View question asks, if you could build anything in the universe, what would it be? I would make shoes that grow with your feet because you never have to buy new shoes again. I would make a matter constructor so that I could make anything else that I wanted. I would make a jacket that could fly when you put it on because cars cost too much. Our last story has John Laytart searching the jungle for elephant tracks. Well, not exactly the jungle, but Janelle Urban's elephant collection. Herds of elephants are stampeding in Costco. Why do you collect elephants? I collect elephants because I like to be different. And elephants are a unique animal. I mean, most people collect bears and cats and dogs and stuff. and. I decided the elephants would be some, a change of pace, something that would fit my personality. How many elephants do you have? I have about 150 elephants. They range between your ceramic figurines, stuffed animals, I've got some books, jewelry, pens, mugs, a wide, wide variety of things. My oldest elephant, I got about Ten years ago, it's a little salt and pepper shaker my grandmother gave me. What are some of your favorites? I have a huge stuffed animal that's about three foot tall that my aunt had given me for Christmas. That's one of my newest ones. Her name is Miss Elephant. It's French. She's a French elephant. She's very special to me. Another one I have is a little music box that another aunt had given me. It was the last elephant she ever gave me. It plays born free and it spins around and it's got two elephants, a mother and a daughter on it. Where do you keep your elephants? I have a special shelf made on my bookcase that I keep all my figurines and ceramic ones. And I have a big overstuffed chair in my bedroom that I keep my biggest elephant on and then my stuffed animals. I have another shelf that I keep my more special ones and that people have given me and that I like to remember. That's all for this week's show. Thank you for tuning in. Join us next week when Franklin Elementary visits New Six. Local support for News 6 has been provided by the Northwest Ohio Educational Technology Foundation, Bowling Green State University, and the members of WBGU-TV.